My name is Joshua. I am from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That is uh, near Chicago, if you're not from the States. Uh, I love guillotines. I have a couple of videos out on it. Uh, all sorts of guillotines. We're going to go over the guillotine itself at its most basic level, and then we're going to get specifically into arming guillotine. We're going to get a little bit into the weeds, okay? Most people will get the normal guillotine, when I spend about 15 minutes on that. After that, the arm in, it can be a little bit tricky. Okay. My brand of jiu-jitsu, how I like to think about jiu-jitsu, is painless, precise, and playful. Who here is a professional jiu-jitsu athlete? Raise your hand. Okay, that's not a lot. <laughs> for, the, for those counting at home, I see zero. Okay. So why do we, can I use you real quick? That's your glass. Can we use you real quick? Why? Go down. Do we get into a guillotine, catch somebody's neck, and try to rip it off just to get a tap? It's like Wednesday, right? Everybody's got to work, and we're taking people's necks, and we're just ripping it off. Who's been guilty of that? Be honest there. And yeah, that's a lot more than there's professional athletes in here, okay? Okay? I'm a hobbyist. This isn't what I do for my, my career, right? I need to talk to people. I need to be able to turn my neck and drink out of a straw. <laughs> we all get that, right? So why don't we do it more? There's ways to strangle people that's precise and painless, okay? You, and most people have learned guillotine. Oh, good lord. <laughs> <laughs> that is disgusting. <laughs> most people learn guillotine, right? Like, come around, boom, grab, full guard, and just pull their head off like it was a dandelion, right? That's how a lot of us learn guillotine. That hurts. That hurts the trick. Ah, right? It hurts the trick. Maybe you'll go out, maybe not, but it hurts. We're going to learn how to do it without pain. Make sense? Everybody would be okay with that, right? Every once in a while, you get that asshole like, nah, I'm going to pop this dude's head. That's okay, right? But in here, when we're training amongst friends, I don't like it. Okay? We, we had a long week of training. We've got a long career of training. Let's, let's do it. Megan, would you be my uke? Uke? I don't, I don't know how to say that word. Uke? Okay, so real quick, uh, has anybody seen or taken a class from me that's seen the guillotine before, how I teach it? A couple people. Okay, so uh, think of what we're trying to do. Okay, what we're trying to do is we're trying to put somebody to sleep. Of course, yeah, anybody that wants to film, absolutely, all the time. Um, so, what we're trying to do is we're trying to put people to sleep, right? We're not trying to neck crank. You can, if this is a fight, a tap's a tap, right? If it's out on the street, if it's an MMA fight, a tap's a tap. All good, okay? But with friends, on a Wednesday, we're going to try to do this uh, clean. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to block these arteries that are running up, okay, to the brain. We're trying to stop the blood flow. For our purposes, we're going to understand these as two hoses. It's not exactly how it works, but it's good enough for us. Okay. So we're going to think about these two hoses. Now, pop quiz. How do you stop water from going through a hose? What's the best way? What's the most precise way? What's that? Squeeze. Okay, that's one way. Kink. Kink. That's right. We take a hose and we kink it, right? Everybody's done that, like looked at the hose, and then when you're a kid, you'd open it up, kick you in the face. Okay, maybe I just did that. I don't know. So in here, that's what we're trying to do. So I'm not, when you elongate a hose, like and you're pulling it, you can stop the water from going through as well. It's just not as effective. Okay? What we're trying to do is we're trying to kink the hose. So what we want to do, if we have a rear naked choke as an example, bicep is on one part of the hose or one hose, forearms on the other, and then I'm figuring out different ways to compress in, right? Press down. With a guillotine, what I want to do is I want to put something underneath the jaw, okay? And then I want to kink the hose, compress down. Something is compressing down. Does that make sense to everybody? So at no point when you're finishing a guillotine am I trying to pull, okay? Additionally, who's felt their trachea get just mangled in guillotines? Yeah? Pretty much everybody. You know, you're just not paying attention to me if you didn't raise your hand there, right? So in this, if we come up at any point in the guillotine, if I'm coming up towards her throat, you're going to get that feeling. If I put something in there and I break posture down, 
you will not. So every time that you're with your training partners, when you're coming up, that's when you feel it in your throat. When you place it with good contact and compress down, you won't feel it, okay? So you have to figure out how to compress, okay? So one of my principles, and you'll hear me say it all the time, is compression, not extension, all right? So what we're gonna do, so we don't spend a whole lot of time on just this basic guillotine, our partner is going to be in turtle. We're going to sit next to him. Armpit is going to go on the back of the head. We're coming through, catching as high as we can on our chest. Armpit on the back of the head, come through, catch as high as on the chest. Both elbows are coming back home. Okay, if you don't get anything else out of this, it's elbows back home. Both elbows are coming back home, and then I'm figuring out how to take my weight to compress down. I am not coming up. Okay, armpit on the back of the head, come through, catch as high as you can. This arm is perpendicular to the jaw. Both elbows are coming back home, and once the elbows are back home, that's pretty much it. You'll feel the difference, okay? You can see in the video, and if you can't see, this is a flared elbow. This is an elbow back home, okay? <laughs> All right, elbows back home, and then compress. And it's not gonna take much, okay? Already getting the tap. Come through, catch as high as you can. Elbows come back home, but I, I can't stress that enough. If we're flared, we're gonna to try to finish like this. Like this, just like we were carrying groceries, okay? Now, when we partner up, I like to do something different because I think it's valuable to watch as well, okay? So we're gonna get into partner, we're gonna get into groups of three, possibly four. If you're in a group of four, two people are watching and then rotate through. And I want everybody to feel what a painless guillotine, if you're coming like this, then talk about it amongst your group. This is how humans learn. We, we discuss with each other, okay? So right now, we're gonna get into groups of three or four. The quicker we can do this, the more information I can get. All right? All right, let's try it. One, two, three. So this perpendicular with the jaw, just like this. So like if, I'm, if I have him here, I'm gonna get over the back. Like, like I can feel like that's a good connection. <laughs> okay, the reason that I go over that non- arm in guillotine in an arm in guillotine class is because the principles don't change. Okay, I don't grow extra arteries. The, the goal of this doesn't change, okay? When we come through and I grab, I, I kind of was sparse on the details because I did label this intermediate, but uh, when I come through on a normal traditional guillotine, I'm grabbing where a watch would be and I'm bringing my elbows back home, right? Okay, if I'm strangling somebody with my right hand, my left hand, I'm gonna label as the helper hand, okay? The helper hand in every guillotine just does something different. I mean, it can be as different as in a mounted guillotine, I could be here and it could be planted, right? Might not even need to be grabbing, okay? We're gonna go over a bunch of different things or a bunch of different grips, but strangle hand, helper hand, if I'm strangling with my right arm, okay? So in an arm in guillotine, if I can use you, Everything is going to stay the same, okay? But instead of being able to get my hands together and tighten it against my body, she was going for a defense of putting this shoulder in and flattening me out, right? Well, I'm gonna use that to my advantage, all right? So again, armpit on the back of the head, come through, try to get perpendicular to the jaw, catch as high as you can, okay? This time, I'm gonna do one of two things. And the first one I like the most, but sometimes the second one is needed, okay? Armpit on the back head, come through, catch as high as you can. The secondary hand can no longer get here, right? So I'm coming around, grabbing where a watch would be. The angle of my wrist is just a little bit different, but I don't want this hand to slip, right? If this hand slips, if the helper hand is out having a drink and doesn't know what it's doing, this hand slips, Look at how much space there is for a neck to survive, right? Compression, not extension. To compress everything, we need to take that space. Look at the difference. I'm not doing anything else with my elbows. I haven't brought anything back home yet. Look at this difference, just bringing that up. That's a pretty small place for a neck to survive, yeah? I still have everybody? All right, good. Catch, this helper hand just stops it from going, okay? So I'm gonna grab, keep it to my chest, and then I'm gonna bring both elbows back home again. This time, there's gonna be an arm in there. My opponent thought they wanted the arm in there. They didn't. 
Perfect. So, armpit on the back of the head, come through. This hand comes through, boom, grab. Okay, now the principles are staying the same. I'm bringing my elbows back home and I'm finding a way to compress down. I'm gonna spin you real quick. Spin, spin, spin. Okay, up, there we go. Okay, when I say compression, okay, it means there's a bend and at this point, right when there's a bend, then I wanna kink it. So it's almost like that jaw, I would like to be here. So it's not just down, and especially if their back can follow, okay? It's here, something in there, and then kinking down like a hose. Okay, does that make sense? So, from this angle, let's see if we can see it from the back. Arm on the back of the head, come through, catch as high as you can, helper hand, grabbing, boop. Now bringing my elbows back home. You see how her neck went, that's what I would like. And then I'm finding ways to add weight to the neck. Okay, does that make sense? So it's the exact same thing we did, just a little bit different of a placement with the helper hand, okay? I think we'll try that. Let's get back into the same group so we don't have to take another five minutes to figure out a group, okay? Talk to each other. It's so cool when you're like, oh, I see this or I see this. A lot of times I learn from you guys when like, oh, is this okay? Yeah, yeah that's actually pretty cool, I hadn't thought of that. Okay, so let's communicate. One, two, three. A couple things that a lot of people are doing that I'd like to suggest otherwise. Okay? First, a lot of people, they're catching, they're getting here, and they're insistent about bringing this through. I've, I've been taught that in classes. Okay? All right? We're trying something different here. We're seeing if this compression, not extension thing works. Okay? So bear with me. Don't bring this through. If I bring this through, what am I not doing? <laughs> I hear it. I hear it. Maybe I could still be compressing. What's the other second thing? There, I saw you just do it. What's going on there? Elbows. elbows home. Thank you. I'm not bringing my elbow back home. This would be weird to carry groceries like this, right? Can you imagine me carrying weight? It'd be like a pump back a Notre Dame or something. Okay? Back. Okay, just, just trust me. It's going to feel weird. I'm sure you've been taught this for 10 years that you should come through and finish like this. I get it. I was too. Okay. But for the safety and uh, your training partner's love, let's not do that. Okay. Just for now, humor me. Catch as high as you can. Bring those elbows back home. All right. Secondarily, I'm, how many times have I said the word squeeze? Anybody? Zero. Yes. I have not said squeeze at all as part of this finish. I don't squeeze. The only squeeze that I may do, it's probably a squeeze, is bringing my elbows back home. <coughs> That's it. Everything else is gravity. Um, it doesn't matter how strong, how strong anybody is. I'm putting my weight, figuring out how to move my hips in the strangle. Once I'm attached, it's it. Now it's just a matter of figuring out how to use my weight to kink that hose. Okay? With your partners, let's just, those two little details. We're not coming through here. We're catching as high as we can, just a nice little contact point, bringing those elbows back home. All right, a couple more minutes of this. One, two, three. I'm going to move on with something harder, <laughs> although some of us are struggling to, to figure out this mechanic. <laughs> cool, like that's what we're here for, right? We're, we're here to talk shop about the best way to strangle people. Maybe this isn't the best way for you, or maybe you're like, oh, I hate guillotines, or maybe you got T-Rex arms, or all this we have solutions for, but maybe it's not for you, and that's, that's cool. But for the most part, it seems like we're getting it. By a show of hands, please be honest. By a show of hands, how many people have felt a painless version of this guillotine? Everybody look around. That's pretty good. In fact, that's better than average. Normally it's about 60% in my seminars. Uh, at least at this point, arm and guillotines adds a level of complexity um, that we're gonna get even higher now, okay? So the next one that we're gonna do is chin strap. So against higher level people, almost never are you gonna be able to get a ton of shit underneath their jaw, okay? So uh, 
camera's here, so I'd like you, that's perfect, uh, up. So if I get a giant bicep, I mean giant, that's sarcasm. If I get something underneath there, it doesn't take much compression, right? Everybody can see that. If I put a finger under there, a lot more compression, okay? The reason that these things get harder is because there's less stuff underneath to compress over, okay? So now we're gonna go to a chin strap grip, which is less stuff. What does that mean to the guillotine? Anybody? Harder to compress, I heard somebody say that. Okay, so these, almost everybody teaches these like this. Almost ever. Okay, so can you do that? Yeah, sure. Uh, does it hurt? Yeah. Okay, I don't like to do that. Everything we're gonna do right now, it's the same principle, you just have to figure it out. Okay, everybody's, well, what if this, what if this, what if this? Nobody can give you these answers because everybody is different. Everybody's different, right? Every scramble is different. Everything is different. So I can't tell you what to do in each scenario. What I can give you is these principles, okay? Compression, not extension, and bring those elbows back home. And these are everywhere in our jiu-jitsu, okay? So again, we're getting our chin strap grip or gooseneck grip. We're grabbing the jaw. What I like to do is I like to feel the pulse on one side of the artery with my finger. And the other one underneath the jaw just wraps around. Everybody see this? All right. Where's my elbow gonna go? Back home, thank you. <laughs> thank you, appreciate it. Elbow immediately is coming back home. Where's my, what is this hand doing? It's the helper, right? It's the assistant. So I'm coming through, I'm grabbing. This time I'm grabbing just the meat of my hand. And then where's that elbow going? Back home. Okay. Chin strap, grab, elbow back home. And then figure out, gently go down one so you can see. So if I get this grip, if I'm like this, now I may need to move my hips. Look at how I have freedom. Right? I'm using my body to figure out how to compress down. Okay? You can come up, sure, I can go like this. That's mean. Elbows here, move my hips to figure out how to compress that neck. Freedom of your hips. You can attach yourself and you can do all this. But try it this way. All right, let's try this. One, two, three. Don't get frustrated by this, it's a little bit harder. <laughs> Most people get frustrated, especially our men, chin strap. It's okay. okay. But we want to move our body to finish that strangle. Now, a couple things. Whenever I show guillotine, I'm putting my legs to the side. The reason I'm doing that is so I can move my hips. Okay. Where possibly could I get into that? Well, let's see. She's internal. Go ahead and try to tackle me or tackle. Look familiar? There's a million different ways into that. I'm not gonna get into that. Um, you can go on Goldshotter and see that guillotine class. All right. Now, where do I hit this? Where do I go for either arm in or guillotine in general? My favorite is top half guard. So if you go down, please. Yep. All right, so we're in this position here. Uh, and it doesn't matter, knee shield, I can jump around, and, and, but for shits and giggles to make this easy, we're going to make sure that this knee is clear, okay? So, uh, if you were instructing her on what to do to get out, what would you say? Anybody? Underhook. Underhook. <laughs> Most people would say underhook. There's obviously a million different ways out of here, but underhook. Go ahead, go for the underhook. All right. Well, what just happened here? So now she's got that underhook, which could be a problem. But if I take this opposite hand and I come around, I have a chin strap, okay? Or perhaps, and what I prefer to do, I love hip switching. So if you watch yourselves grapple, almost always your hips or knees, especially for knee wrestling, are square. What I like to do is turn it, constant, 
Okay. So in this scenario, perhaps the second she goes to the center foot, maybe I switch my hip and then switch it again. Everybody see what position that's going to end up in? As we do this, as I switch it again, you see how this leg opens up. I don't want my hips to fall next to her here. I want them to come out. Okay? And now, what is she going to do? Most likely try to come up. And look where we're at. Does that make sense? So you'll see as we roll this week, I'm a top half guard. I mean, I'll tell you this is what's going to happen. Okay. So top half guard, bait and underhook, awesome. If we're doing arm in, maybe I'll switch to get a nice, bring that elbow back home, right? Switch. Does that make sense to everybody? Both elbows will be back home. Now it's just a matter of figuring out how to get my hips in the right space. Okay? Let's try it from there. We got uh, seven minutes. Okay? One, two, three. So we experienced some guillotines that were painless. That's the win. I've said two things pretty consistently through this. What were those two things? Compression, not extension, bring the elbows home. Beautiful. If you take nothing else from this class, keep that. Okay. Also, as an addition, this isn't a jujitsu thing, but think about when you're going for submissions, do we really need to rip this to make it work? And if so, why? Every submission has a precise way to do it. And if you're not in that precise way, why should you be rewarded that you're strong? Because you're strong. Because <laughs> I am, bitch. <laughs> Does that make sense? We want jujitsu to be for everybody. If we're doing things precise, it doesn't matter if I'm doing it against a 120 pound person or a 260 pound person, right? I want to be precise. That way we can all train for a long time. All right. There were a lot of questions. I don't mind answering questions all throughout uh, camp. I and a lot of the other instructors love to do private lessons. So if you want to do a private lesson with me or any of the other instructors, go up, tap them on the shoulder, be like, hey, I would love to do a private. Doesn't need to be on this necessarily, but obviously guillotines are something that I like. Okay. Um, let's see, anything else? Oh, I think that's it. Uh, I have a question. Um, what, uh, how, how would you control with the jump over the side? We'll talk after. Yeah. Those questions, love them. Uh, but in this setting, we have a minute left. So. Um, we started with some gratefulness. I'd like to end with a thank you. It's really awesome that we have this many people come together in Germany to share our jiu-jitsu knowledge. I mean, I get chills thinking about how fucking cool this is. This is really, really neat. And taking a second to appreciate it is gonna make it that much better. All right? Thank you guys.